This is Top Accolade Global News Update. I am Abiodun Mohammed. A deadly shooting incident has left at least one person killed and another wounded at a Mercedes Benz manufacturing plant in southwestern Germany, according to local police. In quote, one dead, one seriously injured, local police said on Twitter on Thursday, adding there is no longer any danger for the employees in the plant. One person was arrested and rescue workers were on the scene at the factory 56 in Sindelfingen, which assembles the S-Class model, according to a report in the Build newspaper. Investigators are working on the assumption that this was the act of a single perpetrator and that no individuals outside the factory were involved. According to the prosecutor's office, the CDs confirmed an incident had taken place at the plant and that it was in touch with the authorities without elaborating. In 2012, a shooting at the factory site for technology firm 3M in the western German town of Ilden left one dead and four injured. Pakistani authorities took senior leaders of former Prime Minister Imran Khan's party into custody as the government called out the army to help end widespread and deadly protests sparked by Khan's arrest. At least three party leaders have been arrested so far, one from outside the Supreme Court late on Wednesday and another a foreign minister in Khan's cabinet early on Thursday. Tensions remained high in the nuclear-armed nation with paramilitary troops and police on the streets in major cities on Thursday. Mobile data services remained suspended and schools and offices were closed in two of Pakistan's four provinces. The Islamabad police said early on Thursday that troops have reached the capital city. Protesters have stormed military buildings, ransacked the residence of a top army general in the eastern city of Lahore and set ablaze state buildings and assets in other places since Khan's arrest by the anti-graft agency on Tuesday in the land fraud case. At least five people have died in the violence that has aggravated instability in the South Asian country of 220 million people as it grapples with a severe economic crisis and eroding hopes of a quick resumption of international monetary fund bailout funds. In his first televised town hall meeting of the 2024 United States presidential election, Donald Trump dug in on his lies about the rigging of the 2020 presidential election, downplayed the violence on January 6, 2021 in Washington, D.C., and repeatedly insulted a woman in response to a civil jury's finding this week that he was liable for sexually assaulting her. In a contentious 70-minute CNN town hall broadcast on Wednesday, Trump drew laughter from a New Hampshire audience when he mocked writer E. John Carroll's account of him having sexually abused her. He also repeated false quotes about his 2020 election loss, said he would pardon many of his supporters convicted of taking part in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol and called a CNN moderator, Kathleen Collins, a nasty person. During the contentious back and forth in elevating New Hampshire, where moderator Collins sometimes struggled to fact-check his misstatement in real time, Trump continued to insist the 2020 presidential election had been rigged, even though state and federal election officials, his own campaign and White House aides, and numerous courts have rejected his allegations. Trump also repeatedly minimized the violence caused by a mob of his supporters who stormed the Capitol in 2021. Instead, he said he was inclined to pardon a large portion of January 6th defendants if he wins re-election. China has dramatically increased use of the yuan to buy Russian commodities over the past year, with nearly all of its purchases of oil, coal and some metals from its neighbor now settled in the Chinese currency instead of dollars, multiple trading executives with direct knowledge of the matter told Top Accolade News. The switch to yuan to pay for much of a roughly $88 billion commodities trade in the wake of the Ukraine war accelerates China's efforts to internationalize its currency at the expense of the dollar, although strict capital controls are expected to limit its global role in the near term. In March, the yuan, also known as the renminbi, became the most widely used currency for cross-border transactions in China, overtaking the dollar for the first time, official data showed, although its share as a global payment currency remains small at 2.5%, according to SWIFT, compared with 39.4% for the dollar and 35.8% for the euro. Chi Lu, a senior investment strategist at BMP Paribas Asset Management in Hong Kong, predicts a long-term snowball effect as more countries join the RMB bloc to reduce risk of dollar exposure, especially after they've seen what US-led sanctions against Russia have done, he said.
Despite Beijing's push beginning over a decade ago to internationalize the yuan, the currency had only been used sporadically in big Chinese commodities purchases given that most global trading of oil, gas, copper and coal is priced off dollar-based benchmarks. A standoff in Washington over raising the U.S. debt ceiling overshadowed a meeting of group of seven G7 finance leaders starting on Thursday, heightening U.S. recession fears as central banks seek a soft landing for the global economy. President Joe Biden piled pressure on Republican lawmakers on Wednesday to move quickly to raise the limit on the government's permitted borrowing from the current $31.4 trillion or risk throwing the world's biggest economy into recession. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen was expected to face questions from her G7 counterpart meeting in the Japanese city of Niigata on how Washington intends to prevent turbulence in financial markets already G3 after the recent failure of three U.S. regional banks. The U.S. debt crisis is a headache for Japan, which is this year's G7 chair and the world's biggest holder of U.S. debt. That is the size of top accolade global news update. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen. Happy Thursday!